and never hear the gospel would not have responded to it even if they had heard it. And thus no one is lost because of historical or geographical accident or due to a lack of information. Anybody who wants or even would want to be saved will be saved. Now these are merely possible answers to the questions that we posed this evening. But I find them attractive answers as well because I think that they're also quite biblical. To return to the Acts of the Apostles, the book I quoted at the beginning of this talk, chapter 17, verses 24 to 27, where Paul is speaking on uh, Mars Hill in Athens to a group of Greek philosophers. Paul says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and gives to all men life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. This scenario is exactly consonant with the scenario that I have reached on the basis of purely philosophical reflection upon this problem. So in conclusion then, it seems to me that the presence of other world religions does not undermine the gospel of salvation through Christ alone. On the contrary, I think that what I've said this evening can help to put the proper perspective for those of us who are Christians on the task of Christian missions. It is our duty as Christians to proclaim the good news of salvation through Christ to the entire world, trusting that God has so providentially ordered things that through us the good news will come to persons who God knew would accept it if they heard it. There are literally divine appointments out there waiting for us to come to them because God has placed them there because he knew that they would freely receive the gospel and be saved if only we were to share it with them. And thus our compassion toward those in other world religions is expressed not by pretending that they are not lost and dying without Christ, but rather by our supporting and making every effort ourselves to communicate to them the life-giving message of the gospel of Christ. Well, that completes what I wanted to share this evening. I, I think now we'll have time for uh, discussion. So if we can maybe bring up the house lights, uh, we'll do that. Thank you.